This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew McKay-Smith. G'day, hope you're well. Thanks a lot for tuning in to this chat featuring the great Mila Petroza from Creator. Always a joy to catch up with Mila, and this conversation is evidence of that. We cover a whole heap of ground, but most importantly, the catalyst for the chat, which is due to the launch of a new album from Creator, Hate Uber Eyes. It will see light of day on the 10th of June, Friday the 10th of June 2022 via Nuclear Blast. It's another cracking affair from these guys. In my opinion, they do not know how to release a bad album. It's just all there once again if you love violent thrash metal. So before we get to the chat, if you're listening via the podcast apps, we're going to hear a tune. This one is called Midnight Sun. Of course, it is taken from the new album from Creator. Unfortunately, I can't play music if you've tuned in via YouTube, so we'll cut to the chat right now. But again, for all of you on the podcast apps, let's hear Midnight Sun. Let's do it. Mille, how are you? Uh, how are you, man? Good, mate. Good, mate. Is it a good time to chat? Absolutely. No worries, mate. Yeah. I, I can see now the last time we spoke was about five years ago or so. So plenty happened between uh, that particular chat in 2017 and uh, I think it was on the eve of your Australian tour, if I'm not mistaken. And now, mate, so how, how have things been, uh, all things considered? Um, I think it's been, gra- have been great. I mean, we've toured the world, um, I think, twice with uh, the last album. Then mm. uh, we took a year off and then the pandemic hit. <laughs> so we had, a, mm. we had almost two years without concerts. But um, we worked on a new album, yep, and um, which was um, yeah, which um, is coming out what what uh, on the tenth. Tenth is oh. it? Yeah, I've had it for a couple of weeks. I must say, it's a cracking affair. I don't think you guys uh, know how to release a bad album at this point in time, though. Because it is your <laughs> it is you. your fifteenth, <laughs> and and I love that you, you did throw a curveball at the beginning. I wasn't sure what was going on, but Sergio Corbucci, I think his name is the Spaghetti Western Innovator. You did a tribute to him, yeah. a bit like uh, Faith No More did with uh, Midnight Cowboy. Bit of an in, not not that it's the same, but it sort of reminded mm-hmm. me of uh, it was in the similar vibe, and that it was you know it was a curveball. It was something that I wasn't expecting. But then the the album ends on a cut that you wrote with Frederick, your new bassist. So I've, I've had a chat with Fred Frederick Leclerc. He's a mm-hmm. killer guitarist, but now he plays bass with you guys. So, um, and in between in between those two, the uh, the bookends, if you like, there are nine cuts of violence and shrapnel. So fans just love you for that. But uh, mate, look, I've read your bio. It states that uh, the album was basically finished. It was finished prior to COVID. So do you feel a, a sense of relief or excitement that fans can finally hear it? Um, absolutely. I mean, if you were uh, sitting on the I mean, it's not that we were sitting on the music for, for a year or so. It was more that we were, like, ready to go. And then mm-hmm. the second lockdown came here in Europe. And uh, we figured it was better to release an album when we can go on tour and play the music live for our fans. Um, so we have, we've taken the time um, until I think we went into the studio in September, October, 2021 and um, um, did the album then. We did a couple of final tweaks um, since the album was kind of ready in in uh, 2020 always in the end um, but it, it, it was good to have that time because um, that way I figured the, uh, I, I found the new um, the, 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 the title track I found some stuff that I think is essential for the album mm. um, final tweaks but um, very important ones yeah so you evidently did decide to review things through the COVID period but um was it was it one of those situations? Was it because you had your time and the time on your hands um, that you were able to do that, or did you, did you genuinely feel like as though the album needed to have a bit more of a completed feel, um, the one that you'd actually finished prior COVID, prior to COVID? Um, the one the, the one that we finished we we were finished the demos. So there's always like uh-huh. three par- parts of of um, of. Um, um, of the process, it's like we. I, I, I have the idea. Then I do a demo for the band. Then we start working as a band. So the state was when we were finishing 
in, in, in 2020, it was like, okay, we're ready to go into the studio, but there's always things happening in the studio. And it's never finished until the last day, you know, of the, of the recordings in the actual studio. Hmm. So um, um, having that time was a luxury, but it was, a, it was definitely, a, a, probably I would have gotten some of the inspiration um, if we would have done, gone into the studio in the end of 2020. I probably would have gotten the inspiration there already, but I yeah. don't know that. So... You know, I mean, I had that time. I had, I had all this time for for the album, so it was good. It was a good thing. It wasn't um, it wasn't um, anything um, that 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 I could complain about, but it was just not necessary. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The COVID thing was totally unnecessary anyway. Um, so um, uh, for a lot of musicians, you know, we were all put on hold, and yeah. uh, we, we we used the time. We used the time absolutely. Mm. Yeah, this this album though. Now I've only had it a couple of weeks, so I'm not one for grand statements about these things. But if there's been a better solo than the one at, in Killer of Jesus, the one that starts around the two minute fifty mark um, on mm -hmm. an album from the group, tell mm -hmm. me which one you think it is. So did you was that your solo <laughs> there or Sammy's? Because that's just outstanding. Oh, that's a good question because it's either mine or Sammy's. Um, uh, we took uh, also, you know, having all this time listening to the songs, um, mm. it, it, we had so much um, that we could like pick from, and um, so much that we that we um, that we could work on, and to make sure that it's really killer, and um, and um, it's probably it's it, if it's killer solo, it might be Sammy's. <laughs> 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 oh, it's a gnarly solo. It's uh, uh -huh. yeah, it's it, it's something that I haven't quite heard from you guys before. Actually, it's kind of virtuosic, uh, and and mm, it's okay. you guys. You, normally, it's the violence. When I think of creator, it's like Slayer. It's more about the violence and the aggression. But you, you've mm, got a solo mm. on there that I think the great Ralph Santola might be proud to call one of his own. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a compliment. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I to me, I, I don't. I, I mean, I, I Sammy is the one. I, I'm mostly. Um, when I write solos, I, I kind of I'm very intuitive. I'm, I'm mostly like, okay, let's let me try something here. There's a spot like of 30 seconds or something, and I try something, and then we pick the best parts and make it a solo. But Sami, he writes the solo parts. You know, he writes mm. his. I give him the give him the chords, and he go, comes up with something spectacular. So he's the he's um, one that that kind of creates a song within the song. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Great, great point there. Yeah, great way to summarise it. Song within a song. Now, now on that note, talking about the songs themselves, uh, Midnight Sun, and another curveball. I think this is the first time you've worked with a female vocalist. Correct me if I'm wrong, but how did you meet Sophia? Sophia Portnett. Um, Sophia is a good friend of mine, and I've known her from. Um, I've, I've been a fan of her uh, for her album. Um, um, Fire Guys, which came out in the, during the pandemic, it's a very dark album, very um, very very gloomy, and I, I really really like her voice. And um, for some reason, we got in touch over over Instagram or something, and um, and uh, we talked a little bit, and she was like, "Okay, let's do something together." And then we got together, and I had this song, Mid uh, Midnight Sun, which I. I, in my mind, I wanted to have it like almost like a tribute to that movie Midsummer, mm. and um, okay, yeah. And in, in in that in that movie, there's this very strong female character, um, and she's like a uh, she's she's kind of like the main character in the movie, and um, I was visualizing like how would it be if I would work with a female artist uh, to to um, to make the duet. Uh, with me for for that song and it and, and it worked out really really well. I think Sophia's voice is very unique. It's very uh, it's almost like it's a little it's a little um, spooky almost, mm. you know. And that's what I like. I did I wasn't looking for an operatic um, kind of like don't get me wrong, but nothing like Nightwish would do. We, we, mm. we wanted to be more to be like very like creator. And it, I think she really did that. She did a perfect job. Um, making a song with a female artist sound like a creator song, even though it's, there's a different uh, person singing. 
It didn't sound forced either. There's this trend for a lot of bands that uh, try to go for the tick or box strategy, if you like, to try and introduce a female vocalist. And it sucks, to be honest with you. But with your one, it didn't sound forced. It sounded like as though, in a way, and here's a question for you, did you write the song with her in mind or with a female vocalist in mind? Um, I had a demo with me singing a whole bit, um, but I, there was something missing. There was something missing in the chorus. There was something missing um, in, in the pre-chorus. And she came up with some nice arrangements around the pre-chorus and the chorus. And um, um, it was the icing on the cake, so to speak, you know. Um, um, I didn't write the album, uh, the, the song with the female vocalist in, in mind, no. But when me and Sophia got together, I had the idea of that could be the song mm. where where um, that that that, that uh, the, the the midnight sun um, could be a cool art, uh, art uh, feature for for a female artist, and then um, things just fell fell together very naturally. Mm. Agreed. And have you heard what Tom did with Tripticon and the Metropole Orchestra? Orchestra, it's orchestra, I know, but it's given its. Uh, I think it's Dutch, isn't it? The Metropole Orchestra. But did you uh, did you watch that video, or have you heard that album, the Requiem album? Uh, I, I watched some of the video, and I thought it's, it's this is like to me it felt like um, um, this is like this should have been done in the eighties. You know, this is so amazing, mm. um, and uh, I, I, I felt like this is really cool because I thought that that's what Celtic. Pro- I mean, Tom Tripticon, Celtic Cross, what they stood for. And this is like, it was an arty, uh, it was a, a very arty piece of music that he created there with the, with the orchestra. So it was amazing. I, I really love that, that, uh, that, that performance. Yeah, my point around that would be I agree with you totally and I think what made that performance so special is Safa, Safa Haraji. I actually spoke to her. She doesn't do a lot of interviews. We had a, you know, when I say spoke to her, we had an email back and forth um, and she answers some questions over email. But I think I think you guys, so if Celtic, if, if, sorry, if Tom Celtic Frost, you know, same thing, I reckon you guys are at the level where you could do that. You certainly got enough killer cuts within the catalogue to put together something that's as meaningful as that. So could you envision yourselves, say, working with a really good orchestra like the Metropole Orchestra and uh, do, doing the Roadburn Festival? Can, can you see yourself potentially doing that in the future? That's a good idea. I've never thought about it. Mm. But yeah, I can see myself doing that. <laughs> I'd love it, mate. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tom Proof. Because... Uh, you'll, you'll be... You'll be you, you... <laughs> He goes. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Uh, that's a great uh, inspiration. I mean, that's a great idea. I like I said, I've never had the time. Um, mm. I've never had the um, the uh, the vision. But um, the more I think about it, I mean, of course, I've, I've uh, you know, we work with with um, the Flesh God Apocalypse Lips guys for, for oh, a couple of songs on this right. album also. I and know that. I already, yeah, I already, I, yeah, I, I already like. Um, I can kind of hear in my head, in my mind, um, that um, the, an orchestral uh, version of some of the greater songs would be a cool idea. But it needs to be, it needs to be done right. So, but but yeah, that's that's like it seems to be like the, the perfect people to work with if we do this. Yeah, I thought Rage did a great job. Uh, Blind Guardian knocked it out of the park, but I thought Metallica killed it for so many because, look, I love Michael Carmen. You know, mm-hmm. Michael Carmen's now long gone, but uh, those two yeah. together just sucked. Sorry, my opinion, of course, but mm-hmm. it, it, you listen to it and you think it's like as if it's a train wreck that's been brought to life with an orchestra and it, none of it made sense, like the thing that should not be. These are classic songs mm-hmm. in their own right, but I, I, yeah. maybe it's maybe because they're not European and they're not steeped in that tradition like you are, that they thought they mm-hmm. could just sort of blend these two together and voila, here you go. It doesn't work like that. We mm-hmm. know that. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I felt the same way and... Um uh, that's why I only listened to that album once, uh, yeah, or same. I didn't really listen to it. But I heard it. I heard it somewhere, and I, I I felt the same way. I thought it didn't really fit. But like like you said, I mean, if you have songs that are so classic, um, you have, you have to you need to you need somebody that kind of you know gets a, gets a feel for it. To me, music is all about you know spiritual. Uh, and then it's 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 a spiritual experience, and it's it's very emotional. And you need to find 
it's not just like okay, I feel this and you feel that and it will, it will match. It it's not, it doesn't work like that. You need to to be able to um, really really connect. And if it's if it's um, not right, it's not right. People hear that. You can mm. just hear right away. Well, I think the, your fans will be will be uh, thrilled to hear that because. You know, you you can actually ruin songs, to be honest with you, and 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 obviously with with your perspective on those things, there you're in the the band's music is in safe hands, which is lovely to hear. And 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 again, talking about safe hands, I think Arthur risks the. Uh, who, I understand you worked with him on the album. Now he seems to understand how to get the best from the group from a sound perspective. You've never sounded better than what you do on this album here. I've got to say, Hey Do Barolas, it's all there. So. What was it about Arthur's approach that – what is it about his approach that really works for you guys? Um, Arthur, first and foremost, is a total metalhead, you know, and um, he's, he's very much um, a person that comes into the picture, very respectful, very – he knows his metal, he knows the history of the band, he's known – um, creator uh, in and out, and um, when I when I got together with him, it was more like a, we didn't talk about about um, equipment. We didn't talk about um, anything like sound wise. We we talked about like how does this record, how we um, want this record to feel, how what we want people to feel if they hear the record. And we were both we both agreed that we want to capture like the. The, the essence of creator, more the, the core. Um, and um, um, that means that we were really focusing in on, um, on, 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 yeah, on, on, on the, on, on the feel more than on the, on the technique, um, which resulted in a, in a very relaxed um, atmosphere at the studio. We weren't really, um, it didn't really, never felt like working, if you know what I mean. It, it was, we were working very disciplined, but for example, we weren't. I wasn't going in the studio from, say, it was, when we worked with with um, Jens. I was me in the studio from eight o'clock in the evening till six o'clock in the uh, in the morning until six o'clock in the evening mm-hmm. with, um, with 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 Arthur's most more random. It's like, yeah, you want you want to join us tomorrow at twelve? Then he would work with the other guys, and I would come in and uh, work for three four hours get the best takes and then leave. So um, I was very loose. And I, I think you can hear that on the record. Um, he's really, um, 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 Arthur's thing is more like the, 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 the vibe. It's, it's, it's more the vibe than the, than the technique mm. and, and the perfection. So that's why I, I think he's the, he was the, absolutely the right person for A.J. Barless. Mm. I know Suicide Silence uh, pissed a lot of people off when they worked with Ross Robinson in 2017 on their self-titled album, and they quickly mm-hmm. went back to creating more of a death metal style album. The mm-hmm. next one, the follow-up. But but have you mm-hmm. ever been hit up by a left left field producer like a Ross Robinson saying, "Hey man, I'm a big fan. How about we work together?" Um, I've known Ross since his old band Murder Car. And I never thought about working with him for some reason. I, I, I respect him as a um, as a producer, but it never came to my mind. I mm. think um, um, it's it's more. Um, I, I, I how do I put this? Um, I love his work, but I think he probably wouldn't be the right person for creator. Um, but maybe he would be. I, I just haven't tried yet. Um, but we're just happy that we found um, Arthur because Arthur is like he's amazing. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, it just works for you guys. Yeah, yeah. I just thought yeah. a, a, a group with a, a tremendous legacy like what you've got. Surely, to goodness, you get some, uh, even just just some pop producers. This sort of thing to sort of test the waters and reach out to you and say, "Hey, why don't we just see how it goes for a week in a studio and see if something good comes from it?" Oh, that's what we did in in, in Germany for the demos. I mean, I worked with Markus Ganter, who was a big pop producer here in Germany. Ah, I worked yeah. on with him on some of the songs uh, on the six 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 single that we put out before the pandemic hit. Um, uh, Markus Gunter worked with me on on the song we, we did it together with Andy Sneep. Um, but um, this was uh, very inspiring because it's a different. Um, he has a different kind of like. Um, he's also metalhead, but mm. he doesn't produce like a metal producer. So it's it's a new energy that that uh, was that we were experiencing and a new, uh, yeah, a new like 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 
sources of inspiration. And um, I, 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 the original plan was to work with Marcus and um, Arthur, but then um, uh, uh, Marcus was busy and we were just working with Arthur, which was also amazing, you know, so mm. both amazing. But I, I, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, pop producers, it's like, a, it's always like a, almost in metal if you talk about pop producers, some, some people would go like, this is almost like a dirty word, you know, mm. but it's not. It's like these people, um, like especially Marcus Gunter, he's a, he's, he's a fan of music and he knows what he's doing and he's no, he knows how to um, get the best out of a band like Creator. He's, in the end of the day, it's all music and it's all about the song, you know? And um, these people know, they focus on the song, they focus on the, on the, on the core of the song, which I think is the most important thing. Agreed. Yeah, I think you've always had your hand on the steering wheel in the band too, which helps. You know, you haven't had a an addiction issue or any of this sort of shit that some other people have had, and you've you can hear that through some of the not not just the addiction thing, but you can hear it when the leader of a band, the band leader, doesn't have their hands on the steering wheel when a release comes out because it sounds patchy. Like I'll mention it. Look at Ozzy these days. I mean, he's mm. getting producers to do all of his work, and mm. he hasn't had a, he hasn't had an Ozzy album. Arguably, mm-hmm. since Osmosis in 2000 and, uh, 1995, and people would even go back mm-hmm. to when he worked last worked with Bob Daisley, which was No More Tears in 1991. But I, I think your fans, are, the fans, are mm-hmm. grateful, mate, that you've always been the man of the moment with the band on that point. But I have to disagree with you. The last Aussie album, he worked with this guy. Um, what's his name? Um, you work with a pop producer. You work with somebody yeah. that did like Lana Del Rey. Machine, Machine Gun Kelly I, I, or something like that, wasn't it? Or something? It was, yeah. yeah check it. No, yeah. no, not Machine Gun Kelly. It was, um, it was um, um, I, I forgot the name of the guy, but he's a great, great producer. And uh, he got the guy, I think he got the drama from from uh, from the record Chili Peppers. And um, um, uh, yeah, I thought the album was good. What was yeah, Andrew called? Watt. Um, yeah, Andrew Watt was the producer. Andrew Watt. Andrew yeah. Watt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought that was good. I thought that was good. See, and that's what I. Well, 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 my point is, it's like he tried to work with a producer that's not necessarily a metal producer, and I think that's sometimes a good thing. You know, that's sometimes a good thing. Just get somebody from a, with a different perspective, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, you might be right that. Ozzy's not writing his songs anymore, and but, but that's that's uh, he's singing, and it's it's uh, when he puts his voice on something, it sounds like Ozzy. <laughs> yeah, it does. I'm an old fan, you see, and I, I can't stand yeah, the way yeah. he throws like uh, the ultimate sin under the bus. And I mean, all those albums mm-hmm. with, with that Bob Daisley helped him write are the, they're the classic to mm-hmm. me. It sort of isn't that afterwards, yeah, yeah. but you know, that's just me yeah. being an old fella, you know, listening to this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, I, I always go, a man of your intellect, I like to go and ask questions a bit further afield outside of uh, outside of music. In your view, is Olaf Scholz, is he the man of the moment for Germany? Oh, no. Um, he's the lesser of all evils. But I, I and I like, like I have to, I have to admit, I mean, I didn't, the, the personality is lacking in this guy. I'm, I'm just like, okay, there's a, a guy from this uh, Social Democrat Party, which I thought was, in my, when I was growing up, like when I was young, the social Democrats were like the ones that anyone could trust. It's, you had mm. the, the Christian Democrats and the social Democrats and the, the Christian ones were the bad ones, the bad guys and the social Democrats were the good guys. But mm. nowadays it's not that easy. And Olaf Scholz, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think this, that he's lacking the personality that Angela Merkel had, even though I'm not a fan of a party, I'm not a fan of uh, CDU, you know, but uh, mm. she, was a, she was a character. She was very... Um, straightforward and even though she was not the most emotional person she had more personality hmm. yeah she was a she was a decisive leader you just had to agree with the decisions that she was making and and, and unfortunately i think uh, some of the decisions that she made are going to have a lasting legacy potentially to the detriment mm-hmm. of the average german mm-hmm. yeah um like I said, it's it's uh, it's it's always like you always choose the lesser of all evils. It's not like mm. politics, and to me, it's it's all um, politics. It's not like these. It's 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 a tough. Um, uh, how do I put this? You always make a compromise, and you always have to. Even if you're a politician, I don't want to be in their shoes because I think they have to decide things that are sometimes not popular, mm. and there are sometimes not um, some people don't get why they do make these decisions and I sometimes don't get it either but um, you have to somebody has to make those decisions and sometimes it's like okay I don't get it but whatever mm. and um, 
so yeah i mean it's 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 hard it's hard to um to to find like 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 uh, politicians that i could 100 percent trust you know yeah it's just human it's, it's just human nature it's once people get into a certain position they change yeah, that they do. I think, you know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely or whatever the saying is. And we see that in Australia, America, especially in the bloody US at the moment, those poor bastards with what they're dealing with mm-hmm. over there. At least we're not dealing with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, sorry to my American friends. But, uh, mate, mate, second last question for you is you're obviously a lot closer to the war in Ukraine physically, geographically speaking, than what we are here in Australia. Mm-hmm. But what, what's the mood like in Germany? Is there a feeling that we're sliding back into hard borders and a totalitarianism, you know, like the old cold war situation kind of yeah um it's it's a it's a catastrophe and uh you're absolutely right we're very close to the ukraine actually our the, the, the first concert that we were supposed to play after the pandemic was in kiev and then we would would have gone to moscow and st petersburg mm. that all that's all like postponed canceled whatever um but it's not this is not the important issue the important issue is that there's people getting killed every day in yeah. this war now. And it's like, it all already became like yesterday's news in the media, and um, but it's still happening and it's still going on, it's still a disaster. So um, uh, I'm, I'm totally, I'm totally, when I, when I heard about that war, I was totally speechless. I was, I couldn't, I couldn't believe that something like this is happening in Europe and uh, I, I still can't believe it. And which doesn't really mean that though the wars that they were doing before that and they were still going on in Syria and then and, 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 and all the Middle Eastern yeah, countries I'm yeah. not I, I, I'm, I'm just as horrible but you you get a you get a you get a different vibe you know I mean I've, I've, I've been been on a train with um, refugees from from uh, Ukraine um, when yeah. the war started going from Berlin to Essen and you know these people had like a plastic bag with all their belongings yeah it's horrific yeah it's you know what bounces. I mean so it's yeah. like it's, it, it, it's real it's fucking real and it's like the world is watching and there's nothing you can do it's like how can you stop this tyrant you know that's I mean I don't know I'm not I'm, like I said I'm not an expert on these things but I, I think on a human level it's uh, oh, fucking horrible Mm-hmm. Yep, you're not wrong. It's fucking awful what's what's going on now in Ukraine. It's been absolutely disgusting what's been going on in Yemen and Syria. And yet yet the media, to mm-hmm. your point, just seem to want their fucking Twitter-style bloody... Their, their head, you know, their, the Twitter cycle, which is every 30 seconds or whatever it is, uh, and they just move on. They're not actually focusing on... I'm a journalist, okay? I do think that we have... Mm-hmm. We are the fourth estate as journalists. We need to be active in so, insofar as agitating mm-hmm. for positive and correct change in that way. And yes. you see Absolutely. even these, these hardcore lefties or whatever that are yelling about all sorts of identity politics in the Western countries, they couldn't get a shit about the average Yemeni and what the person in Yemen or, yeah. or even yeah, to a lesser yeah, extent... Yeah, yeah. You true, know what I mean? True. It just sucks. Absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could talk about this all night, but I know you got to. I know you got to head off to the next one in the moment. So I'll make this my last question mm-hmm. for you, mm-hmm. Australia. You know we love you. You came down here before with Vader, and you knocked it out of the park. When are you coming back? Mm-hmm. Hopefully soon. Is it possible to do tours in Australia again? Like yeah. COVID? Yeah, we're back on deck now. Yeah, thank God. I, you yeah. know what? Um, uh, as soon as possible, as soon as possible, we'll come back to Australia. Uh, I think we're focusing at this point. We're going to America and um, and, and or Europe. That these are going to be our next steps. But right after that, beginning of next year, I would I would uh, reckon we will be back in Australia. Look forward to it. Good on you, mate. It's been another outstanding conversation. Good luck with everything. I know this album's going to be a success for you because it's a killer album. I uh, hope to see you down right. soon. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you very much. Thanks, brother. No worries. You take care. You take care. You Bye. Take- Well, there you have it, ladies and gents, another conversation with Mila Petroza. It's my third or fourth with the great men, and it's always a joy. They just get better and better. The, uh, The new album is outstanding, too. Do check it out if you enjoy thrash metal. Now, if you like that chat, there are plenty more just like it over at scarsandguitars.com. And if you like reading, I've got a book out as well. You can click on the links on the website and go to a marketplace of your choice. Download a sample. And if you do buy it, please hit me up because I want to thank you personally. My name is Andrew Mackay-Smith and I'm the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast series. Please do stick around as I tell you a little bit more about the book.
This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew McKay-Smith. I've been the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast since 2017. The first musician I interviewed for the show was David Vincent from Morbid Angel, and things have just snowballed from there. In all, I've posted almost 650 podcast episodes featuring conversations with many of the leading lights of rock, heavy metal, and beyond. It just got to a point where I thought, I need to write a book about all this, so that's exactly what I did. In Scars and Guitars Volume 1, you'll read a heap of deep reveals and commentary, such as Des Fafara talking about Cold Chamber and why the band will never return. You know, if you're a, a band just starting out, you need to hear me. Do not start a band with partners. Ever. Yeah, wise words there. Sage advice, mate, for anybody. Don't ever, because I, I can't go do Cold Chamber right now unless I get others involved. Phil Anselmo talks about the episode in his career, which gives him the greatest sense of accomplishment. I think the staying power of the, the fans and the staying power of the I, of the songs, you know, whether it's Pantera, Down, or Super Joint, the fans remember the songs. Alex Skolnick from Testament confirms that, yes, playing the guitar in Ozzy's band is anything but an ordinary gig. Will Silent Oz from Demu Borgir write a book? Pa from Sabaton gives advice to people who want to start a band. Look at the team around you, look at the bandmates. If, uh, if the guys want to be on the stage, then it's all cool. If the guys want to be backstage, then it's not going to be cool. Current and former members of Cradle of Filth discuss the band's seminal 90s material. Read about the reaction to George Lynch and Mark from Suicide Silence's comments when they throw shade at then President Donald Trump. We have this idiotic monster, you know, this egotistical, self-aggrandizing, complete piece of shit in there. I, 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 just, I just can't understand how we've gotten to this place. And yeah, we kicked a hornet's nest with Sepultura. Percussive overlord Gene Hoagland talks about recording with Chuck Schuldiner. Chuck was always, um, you know, he was, he was very, you know, very open-minded and, and he was into having his, his musicians that were playing with him just reach out for, for the best stuff that they had. Phil Campbell from Motorhead discusses what it takes to get sober. John Five answers his critics who dismiss his tenure with Marilyn Manson. You know, my name is John Five and Manson gave me that name and um, I had some of the best years of my life in that band and, and learned a lot. And we get the lowdown on Trey Zagtoth from those who would know, including his mother. All across Scars and Guitars Volume 1, there are moments of tension, relief, tragedy, exhilaration, and throughout it all, you'll obtain insight that I believe no one else has managed to obtain from many of your favourite artists. So treat yourself. Scars and Guitars Volume 1 is currently available as an ebook with a print edition on the horizon. Follow the links attached and download a sample. I'm sure you'll be compelled to read the whole book.